Hey friends, welcome back to the channel where we talk about how to boost your productivity and build better habits. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to build a master book database inside of Notion. In 2018, I set out on a goal to read 30 books by the end of the year. And although I came up for shy at 26, I still felt pretty good about myself. However, when asked by friends or family what my favorite book was or what were some of the things I learned, I realized, although I read much, I didn't actually learn a ton. I was in this reading fallacy. Now, I'm sure this has happened to you or somebody that you know, but hopefully once we create this incredible book database that can hold all your book notes and summaries, it can be an easier way for you to store all your notes, all your thoughts, and all your ideas about a book that hopefully end up with you learning much more and not just reading books to kill time. And with that said, let's jump into Notion to see how this works. So here we are in Notion, and this is my life dashboard. So I kind of have a life why up here, uh, a place for quick notes and kind of areas or silos of my life. And so we're gonna navigate to my master book list. And this is what the book list will look like when we're completed today. So we'll have the name of the book here, the year that it's read, the author, a quick rating, the date that it was read. Obviously, I kind of updated these all in one go because these were all from 2019, um, but I decided to make this in July. So I don't really have like static dates for all of them. But next to that, we have the type of book that it was. As you see, I'm a very nonfiction guy, a couple of fiction, but not really. Um, we have some book notes here. So this is the tag of whether or not I have to or um, I have completed or have yet to complete book notes. And that can be a checkbox as well. And then we have the date added here. Um, I just like to know as this kind of gets built out over the years, I would love to know when did I add books? Um, but obviously, like I said, I did this in one backlog, so they're all in July. So to teach the tutorial, uh, I'm going to go into a different workspace just so we're completely blank, nothing else is in here. And we're gonna make two pages. And one page is going to be the book list, and you can name that whatever you feel like it. Uh, and this is going to be a database. So don't click any of these, click table. So once you have that, we're gonna go ahead and add a new page and we're going to call this authors. And this is as well, this is going to be a database. So in the book list, uh, we're gonna go ahead and delete both of these, just kind of annoying uh, that those are there. So the name, obviously that's going to be the um, book. That's gonna be the name, the title of the book. The second column, we're gonna name it uh, author. And we're going to make this a relation and we're going to relate it to our author database. Um, and the reason for that is so there's a relation between these two. So if I put a new author in here, uh, say name Simon Sinek, and here I do Simon Sinek, and say this book is uh, The Infinite Game, and start with, whoops, start with Y by Simon Sinek. Now, when I go to the author database, we see Simon Sinek has authored The Infinite Game and Start With Why. So go ahead and delete both of those columns. So that is how the relational databases work. The book list database has a column that is related to the author database. If we click into Simon Sinek, we see here, we can go into his kind of page. So he has um, read or he has authored The Infinite Game and Start With Why. So if we go into the author's page, we can name this, um, books written. So now uh, you're just going to go ahead and kind of fill out this page where uh, the name of the authors are. So uh, James Clear, uh, Simon Sinek, uh, Jim Collins, whatever authors you have, whenever you add a new book, you're going to add the author name here. So let's go back to our master book list page and let's add a new column that is uh, the year that's read. I think this is a fascinating thing to have. And this is going to be a select. So we'll do 2020, obviously. Hit enter, erase that. Go 2019, hit enter. And we'll just go to 2018. Hit enter. And Simon Sinek, Infinite Game, I read in 2020. Uh, start with Y, I read in 2018. Uh, all right, so we're gonna collapse that. We can collapse this a little bit. So we have the name of the book, the author, the year that it's read, and for this next column, we're gonna go ahead and do a rating. So the rating is gonna be a select column as well. And if you're on a Mac, uh, you're gonna go ahead and hit Control Command Spacebar to get up the emojis. And this is kind of a fun way to just add some fun to it. Uh, as you see, 
if I navigate over to my other dashboard or my other book list, you see I have ratings here um, that are kind of stars. And so that's what we're gonna fill out now. So we're gonna go over back to that Notion database and the rating. So for the rating, we're gonna do command control space bar and type in star in the search. And you could do the fire emoji, you could do hearts, you could do whatever you really feel like doing, but I'm gonna do stars. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna copy this star and we do paste it four times. So one, two, three, four, five, was that right? One, two, three, four, five, yeah, perfect. So hit enter and then erase that. One, two, three, four, hit enter. Whoops, one, two, three, four. And we're gonna go ahead and create a four, one, two, three. Gonna go ahead and create a rating of three, rating of two, and a rating of one. And just for kicks, let's do a different star that kind of represents like half a star. So let's do that for half a star. Um, you know, in case like a book is really bad. If the book's really bad, I hope you don't actually finish reading it uh, and don't take the time to put it in here, but it could be fun to do that. So we're gonna change these colors. So if it's a five star book, we can change it to green because that's like the best book ever, super good. Actually, let's do that. We're gonna change it to blue. Uh, and it's a four star book. We're gonna go change that to green. Three star book, we can go yellow. Two star book, uh, we can go orange. One star book, let's go red. And then kind of this uh, half star book, let's just go gray. Cool, so there we have our ratings. And if you want to, uh, you can make a relational database for this. Um, I don't know why you would. I, don't, I feel like that wouldn't really be necessary. Um, but the cool thing with doing kind of the relational databases for authors is if you open up uh, the author page, you can type in information about the author. So you can do like, if we go into, if we go into this category, uh, let's collapse this sidebar or bar a little bit and let's do a link, call a link and make it a URL. And I'm just gonna paste in Simon Sinek's uh, sidebar here. And basically all that does is uh, just allows me quick access to kind of jump to his personal site. So I can click that and it'll launch up his site. One other thing too, uh, so this book's written, you see it's kind of, they're kind of collapsing and that is a, uh, a setting. So you can turn wrap cells on or off. So if you hit, if you turn wrap cells off, it'll just be one line um, and you won't be able to see the other books. Uh, for the author, I think it's kind of cool to see how many books the author's written uh, compared to how many you've read. That's kind of fun. Um, cool, so we have the author, the year that's read, uh, the rating, I would for sure give Infinite Game a five-star rating and expand that so it fits, uh, looks good, nice and centered. Uh, the next thing we're going to add is the date that I read it. Um, and so we're going to change this. Uh, we're gonna name it, add a new column and go date read and the text is going to turn into a date. So make that a date. Uh, where's the date? Ah, there it is. Make that a date column and turn on end time. And so the reason you do this is so you can see, I read it from August 30th to August 30th. Um, and I'm gonna actually gonna go back because I read it in the beginning of this year. So I'm gonna go January, I think it was like February 1st, uh, it took me about a week. So, and then end time, we're gonna go navigate back to February and start at the first, so I go like the eighth. Um, so that, and that just kind of gives you a fun way to be able to see how long uh, the book is read for, and also helps you know um, if you have yet to finish the book, because if you have a book that you started on August 1st and haven't finished it, obviously you don't see kind of the end date there. So that's gonna help us a lot um, when we try to filter out the books that we are currently reading and the books that we have read. The next uh, column we're gonna do is the type of book. So go ahead, add a new column, and go ahead and you can type in type, actually type in genre, and change that from a text to a select, and type in non-fiction. Go ahead and create that, and then type in fiction. And those are the only two that I added. Um, into my category because I really don't read any other books other than nonfiction and rarely do I read fiction books. Um, but uh, The Infinite Game was a nonfiction book, so we're gonna go ahead and add that and then we can collapse that sidebar, give it some less room. Uh, and then we have book notes. So 
one of the things I love to do is uh, take book notes on all my books. So if we go back here to my database and uh, actually, and we go to one of these where the book notes is completed, see right of a lifetime, open that up and we see um, I have book notes for a one sentence summary. Um, and this book was incredible, uh, Ride of a Lifetime by CEO of Disney. Um, and it was at all costs, you must be willing to innovate the way you do business and what your company delivers. You must have an innovate or die mentality. So I always start with a one sentence summary, two key takeaways from the book, and then chapter summaries. Um, so this is not a summarization guide like Tiago Forte. Um, I'm working on one of those, but this is just purely notes, kind of highlights, thoughts that I had um, while I was reading the book. So, and I do that when I'm done. So when I'm completely done with the book, I go through and flip through it, whether it be on Kindle or actually um, paper book. So I'm gonna go to, um, actually, let's make this a checkbox. So book notes. So if book notes are done, obviously you're gonna hit check. And if they aren't done, we're gonna do um, uncheck. So that is just to show us, and that's gonna help us um, filter out kind of the books that we have done and the books that we haven't. And the last column that we're going to make is the date added. So we're going to scroll down and go ahead, created time. So obviously all of these three are created today. Um, but as you kind of go about your business and you kind of build this out, you're going to be able to see when you have and when you haven't added books. And this really is cool for when you create a wish list of books or a book list that you want to read because you can see um, oh, I added this book in July of 2018. Uh, I still haven't read it. Maybe I should I should get on that book. So it's just kind of cool to see when books are added. Um, and before we continue, um, I didn't add an icon or a book cover. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and add an icon. And actually, I typically go to uh, notion.vip um, and grab one of their icons. I think they're the coolest company, one of the coolest companies. They have a really cool um, minimalist icons, but I can't show you my Chrome because of the way the loom is recording. So I'm just gonna add the books. Um, and I actually like that cover. I typically use gradients. Maybe we reposition it a little bit. Um, yeah, I like that, a little lighter. Cool, so that's just a fun way to do that. So now that we have this um, book list database kind of built out, now we can start to add different views. So one of the views we're gonna add is all books. So that's gonna be the first view. So we're gonna add a view and we're gonna name it all books. And we're gonna, create it by a table and go ahead, go ahead and uh, hit create. You can rearrange this list however you want. So if you want um, the author to be at the very end, you can just click and drag that. Uh, if you want the book notes checkbox to be um, at the very beginning, you can go ahead and uh, just drag that around. So whatever you feel um, is necessary, whatever you think is going to be the easiest, go ahead and do that. So, but we're gonna add a couple sorts. So we're gonna sort it and I want um, my all book list, I want to sort by uh, the name of the book. So the reason I wanna do this is because this is kind of my all books, this is basically my library. So whenever I go into this book list looking for books that I've read, I'm gonna to go to my all books list and it's gonna be really easy for me to sort if everything is alphabetical. So that is why we add the sort and we aren't gonna filter out anything because this is just all the books I have in my database. Next view we're going to add is a, um, and we can go ahead and delete this default view because most likely it's not very good. So the second view we're going to add is the reading now view. So we'll name it reading now, put a little ellipses there, and it is going to be a table. I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Um, so start with Y, perfect, um, infinite game. So all of these stuff is good. Again, feel free to rearrange uh, as you please, but I'm going to keep it how it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a filter here to filter out books that we are currently reading. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add filter here and we're gonna click add a filter and we're gonna do where rating is, uh, whoops, is empty is what we're gonna do. So rating is empty. So because the rating, because I haven't finished the book, I haven't been able to give it a rating. And so this is how I know these are all the books that I'm currently reading. And again, we're gonna add a sort um, by name ascending, just that way it kind of keeps um, our alphabetical format. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure this column has a date read, because if I'm started to read this book, then it's gonna have a date there where it's uh, started. Now it doesn't have to have an end date because you're still reading, but that's gonna allow us to add another filter. So we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and click filter and add a filter where uh, the date read is 
not empty. And um, that way it's gonna filter out all the books that we still want to read. So I'll show you in the next few that we create, we're gonna have a book list, but because we haven't started reading those books, there's not gonna be a date read, which meant that it's gonna filter those books out of this view. So that's what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna go, go ahead and add a view. In this view, we can call this unread. Actually, we're gonna call it to read. So books to read, go, ahead and go ahead and click enter. And all right, so here's our to read uh, view. And again, rearrange columns as you uh, wish, however you wanna do it. But first, uh, we're gonna add a filter. So go ahead and click filter, add a filter. And we're going to add a filter where the date read is empty. And so what this does is it filters out all the books that are in our database that the date read is not empty because we add the filter of is empty. So say this is basically the books I want to read, kind of my wish list. So we're gonna add here, um, and I'm gonna add a new book, Atomic Habits. Uh, I've already read this book, um, but this is for just for the sake of the video. And we need to do James Clear. And as you see here, because I haven't created James Clear's page in the author's database, it's giving me the option to create a new page for James Clear in authors, which is exactly what I wanna do. So I'm going ahead and click that. And because the date isn't read, and because the rating is empty, because the date read is empty, um, this book is still in here. So now, whenever I'm ready to go buy a new book, whether that be on Amazon or Kindle, I just go to this book list and see, oh yes, I wanna read Atomic Habits. Um, and we're gonna add a sort here as well, um, just by the name ascending, again, to keep up that alphabetical flow. So now I'll show you, if we go back to our Reading Now books, um, it still only shows start with Y. And the reason it doesn't show Infinite Game is because Infinite Game has a rating, and the reason it doesn't show Atomic Habits is because Atomic Habits does not have a date read. So if I go into Atomic Habits and I click date read and say, I just started reading this yesterday, it's gonna filter that out. And go back into Reading Now, I see, oh yeah, I started Atomic Habits uh, today. So that is kind of how the views and the filters work. So the next we're gonna do is we're gonna add um, read, read in uh, a view for read in 2020. So this filter is for the this current year. So books that you read in 2020, you're gonna go ahead and add a filter where the um, year read is 2020. So that's gonna filter out all the books that do not have the year read as 2020. So it filtered out, uh, start with why, because I read that book in 2018. And again, we're gonna add another sort uh, name ascending to, again, as this book list grows, we want to st keep and s um, stick with that organizational structure of the A, B, C, D. So last uh, and final view that we're going to add is uh, the view for to do. Actually, we're going to name it uh, book notes to do. Oops, that's going to bug me. Sorry, I got to rename that uh, to do. Boom, there we go. All right, so make sure we're in that view. Again, uh, feel free to rearrange as you please. Um, but what this view is gonna do is it's going to filter out, um, filter where the checkbox of book notes is unchecked. Um, and so the reason these books are showing up is because I still need to do book notes for Atomic Habits, start with why, and the Infinite Game. Um, say I get some free time tomorrow or sometime this week and I finish Infinite Game, I finish the book notes, I'm just gonna go ahead and click that checkbox and as you see, it goes away from our book notes to do because I no longer have to do those book notes. But if we go back to all books, it is still there in the Atomic Habits right, is right there because this is all of our books. Um, and, oh, sorry, the Infinite Game. And it, if we go back to our book list, we still see the Infinite Game is right there with book notes checked off. So let's now get back to our book notes to do at a sort of name ascending. And if you prefer to sort uh, the books by the author or the date read or the rating, um, feel free to do whatever you wanna do with those. There's no really right way to sort it. That's just how I prefer to do it is um, the A, B, C, and D. So with the book notes, it's pretty cool. Um, you can do a couple things. You can add a template um, if you'd like. So one of the things I did in mine, if we go ahead and go to this drop down of the blue, and I'm gonna go new template. I'm gonna call this um, book notes. To do and if we click this uh, we can do h3 like uh, one sentence summary and h3 again uh, two key 
takeaways, two key takeaways. And instead of this, we're gonna do a new book. So now that we have that, say you come across a new book you wanna read, um, you could click this new down here, um, but that doesn't give you the option to start it as a template. So we're gonna click on that and delete that. And we're gonna click this new button right here. And as you see, I can start to begin, I can begin filling stuff in here, or I can press this new book page right here. And the new book page is gonna pop up. The one sentence summary with the two key takeaways are automatically going to appear. Um, this makes it really cool and easy. So whenever you're ready to do the book notes, you have kind of your template laid out. And that could be whatever you wish to do. Um, if you wanna have kind of a, dip a different layout, if you wanna have um, maybe a section for what you remember when you're done reading it, and then you wanna come back a week later and do a week later what you remember. There's so many different ways that you could um, work with the book notes and everything inside of it. Um, so yeah, that is our master book list database. Um, if you want to, you can change this view um, and you can do uh, book covers. And instead of it being a table, it can be a gallery. And you go ahead and hit create. Uh, so one of the things you could do, um, if you wanna do this gallery view, make it look a little prettier, you can add um, new properties. So we're gonna do, go ahead and add a new property and we're gonna call this book cover. And we're gonna change the text to files and media. And then we're going to go ahead and Google uh, the infinite game book cover images. Drag this, oops, it's Google Play Store. Bam. Save image as uh, projects. So if we have that book cover section um, open for files and media, we can click this empty box and choose a file. And I don't know if you can see this because it's not Notion, uh, but basically I'm just dragging that cover in from um, Google. Gonna go ahead and exit out and then start with Y here. We can click those um, three dots, navigate to properties. And we're gonna cover, we're gonna turn on, uh, let's turn on author, let's turn on book cover and let's turn on uh, genre. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on fit image. And then the card preview here, instead of it being uh, none page content or uh, page cover, we're gonna click book cover. So this is basically reading our properties and saying, oh, I see you have a files and media tab. Do you want that to display on the card cover? Which indeed we do. So we're gonna press that and you see the infinite game now um, the book cover is popping up there. And if you don't like it fit in there, you can turn that off. So you can press the three dots, go to properties and turn fit image off. Um, and we'll do card size large. And so you see, so with fit image off, um, it doesn't fit the image like it did before. It's just going to cover the whole card. So whichever you want to do for that. Um, the reason I don't do that is just because it's an extra step that I really, I mean, it might look cool if you have a ton of books in here with covers, but it's an added step. Um, sometimes book covers can be hard to find. It's just um, it's just really difficult in my opinion. So, but that is another view that you can do if you would like. And now you see, because we have that um, property in there, we have it here as well, that book cover, and you can see the tiny little image there. Um, and if you don't wanna see this in your all books list, you can right click on that and you can press hide. So it's just hiding it from this view. So if we go into to read view, um, the book cover is back there. You don't see it because infinite game is not in this, but the column is still there. So if you don't want to show that um, file and media tab in one of the views, just right click on the column and hit hide. And you can do that for any view um, if you wanna change or not hide the, if you wanna hide the nonfiction or the author, whatever you wanna do. So that is the master book database. I hope this helped and I really hope you use this to um, use spaced repetition, active recall, so many other things because there's so much knowledge packed in books that we just don't always review them. So I hope you use this to review it. Um, use this to build your second brain as your book list and be well. So that is how to build a master book database inside of Notion. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button, tap the bell and subscribe so you get notified when I post new videos. And if you wanna see more about Notion, go ahead and check out this video right here where I talked about how to build a master task database or go ahead and watch this video. And if you're curious about learning more about productivity and habits, consider subscribing to my weekly newsletter. Every Friday, I send out a quick update about what's going on in the world of technology, plus one thing for you to implement in your next week to be more productive. The link for that is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one.